So the days of having to know how to code and write HTML and CSS and JavaScript to make a website are long gone. You can build a website literally in minutes without knowing anything about coding or servers or anything like that. I've been building websites multiple times a year since 2010, so I followed the space for a long time and it's literally never been easier. But it's now gotten to the point where there are an overwhelming number of choices when it comes to making a website at different price points with different features. And so in this video, we're gonna start by breaking down the three different paths that you could take if you want to build a website. And then based on which of those different paths you wanna choose, I'm gonna share some recommendations as to how you can build a website for different price points without having to know how to code. What is the point of a website in the first place? A website is essentially a home on the internet. It is a place where anyone in the world can type in a URL in their little address bar, and then they can go to your website. And so it's a way of you being able to showcase basically whatever the hell you want without a social media platform like LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook or whatever. And depending on who you are and what your needs are, then the different stuff that you have on this website is gonna vary. So for example, if you're a professional, then you might wanna have a personal website because if, for example, someone's looking to hire you, yes, they're gonna look at your LinkedIn profile, but they're probably gonna Google you and normally the first result is going to be your own personal website and so you can kind of use that as a professional CV or a personal CV of sorts. If you're working in like a creative field or something you could have your portfolio on the website and even if you're not then at least you can showcase what you want employers and people who might hire you in the future to be seeing on your website. Secondly if you're a creator then a website is a great place where you can publish written content. So these are the bloggers and the writers and even like the graphic designers and illustrators and stuff. If you're going to be publishing content regularly whatever that content is then yes of course you can put it on social media platforms, but you also might as well put it on your website. And thirdly, if you're an entrepreneur or you're a business and you want to sell stuff, then a website is a fantastic way of selling things. Loads of commerce is done on the internet these days and you need a website to be able to sell stuff. And a website that we're talking about in this video is distinct from a web app. So a web app would be something like Twitter. It is an application on the web that people can access on the web and can interact with. And it's basically like an app but in the form of a website. That's not what we're talking about here. It's really, really hard to build a web app, i.e. an app in the form of a website without knowing how to code. You kind of need to know how to code and that is like a whole other ball game. But in this video, I wanna focus on the traditional website, basically a place where you can either showcase your stuff or you can write content or you can sell things. And those are the three different paths that you can go down. And depending on which of these three things is your primary concern, I've got a few different personal recommendations as to what website platform you should go for and how you might wanna go about it. I'll put timestamps to everything down below. So if you don't wanna watch the whole video, then you don't have to, because it's probably gonna be quite long, but you can decide which of these paths you wanna go down. So path number one is where you are trying your best to publish some kind of content regularly probably gonna be written content, but it doesn't necessarily have to be written content. Path number two is where you don't really care about publishing content regularly on the website. You would rather have your website as a bit of a showcase. So for example, if you're a professional, it might be your personal or professional CV. If you're a business and you wanna sell services rather than products, then this would be your showcase where maybe you show your portfolio or the kind of work you've done. And it lets people who want to do business with you see what you're all about by going on your website. And then path number three is where you want to actually sell stuff on your website. So that might be for businesses or even creators or entrepreneurs. If you wanna sell stuff, whether it's digital or physical, then you wanna go down path number three and you need a website that's got e-commerce functionality built into it. Path number one, I primarily want a website so that I can publish content. Now here there is a very good free option and that is Substack. Now Substack technically is not a website platform. It is in fact a newsletter platform. And on Substack, you can sign up completely for free and then you can write a weekly or bi-weekly or however often you want newsletter which then gets emailed to people who subscribe to your newsletter, but then it also lives on the website. Now, if you don't wanna pay anything at all, then you can get the Substack domain name. So it might be, I don't know, aliabdal.substack.com. But if you want, you can buy your own domain. And so whatever platform I use to design my website or even Substack, I can connect up my domain name to that. So I don't need to have aliabdal.substack.com. I can just have aliabdal.com. Now, Substack is really good if all you care about is publishing content. It is a very easy way to get started. You don't need to worry about design or customization or any of that faff. And there are so many people I know who have started creating content on the internet through publishing on Substack initially completely for free. And then later on, you can level up yourself to a fancier, more customizable website if that's what you want. So Substack is level one. And then level two within the content creator publishing content path is a platform called Ghost. Now I've been using Ghost since 2015. So for the last eight years, as of the recording of this video, my website has been hosted on Ghost and Ghost starts at $9 a month. And so it's a fantastic platform if you kind of want to do the publishing content thing regularly, but you want a proper website rather than quote, just a Substack account. On that basic plan at the moment, you can get some of their basic templates. The basic templates are very good. Honestly, for the first like four years of me having my own website, I was just using the completely free default bog standard theme that Ghost supplies. And I would constantly get emails from people being like, oh my God, how do you 
you design your website, it's so pretty. The other nice thing about Ghost is that it's got newsletters and memberships built into it. So let's say you start publishing content regularly, you've got your proper website that you've connected your domain name to, and now you wanna start launching a paid membership option, you can do that if you want, or if you wanna start sending newsletters, you can do that if you want. It's the same sort of functionality that Substack provides, but it just gives you a proper looking website rather than just a Substack newsletter. And then if you wanna upgrade from Ghost, you can upgrade to level three, which is WordPress. And actually we have just migrated from Ghost to WordPress as of like this week. So what is WordPress? Well, basically WordPress is free open source software that powers around 40% of the websites on the entire internet. It is by far and away the market leader in terms of what people build their websites on. And WordPress started off as a blogging platform, kind of like what Ghost is, but over time it just got more and more and more features. Some say it became very bloated and became less about being a professional blogger and more about just a platform that you can build literally any website on. Now, the reason why I've not been using WordPress for my own personal website since 2015 is because I didn't need it. WordPress has tons of features. It's a little bit bloated at times. Anytime I fiddled with WordPress for my own personal site, I would feel overwhelmed and then I wouldn't end up writing anything. And so for the first eight years of my internet career, my site was on Ghost because Ghost was nice and simple. But now that our site is getting like a million hits a month or something like that, we kind of needed to upgrade to something a little bit more full featured because there's all sorts of other stuff we want to start including in the website, which is why we've switched over from Ghost to WordPress. It's not necessarily something I'd recommend for a lot of people. I think if you're just a blogger and you just want to write stuff on the internet and you want a pretty looking website to go with it, Ghost is still a really solid option. But if you're looking for something a little bit more full featured and more customizable, there's like literally tens of thousands of plugins for WordPress as well. So almost any functionality you want, you can add to WordPress broadly without having to know how to code. And there's also marketplaces of like literally thousands of different themes. So you can get your website to look however you want. Now WordPress is actually free, but if you want to actually use WordPress to host your website, which is kind of level three in this particular content path, you need to find a hosting provider. And there's loads of these on the market, but the one that we personally use is called a WP Engine. And the reason we use WP Engine is basically for the reliability, the security, the performance. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive than some of the really, really cheap options, but I've been using WP Engine to host the WordPress site for another one of my businesses since like 2017. And so I had a lot of experience using that and never had any issues with it at all. And so when it came to switching over from Ghost to WordPress, they were the first people we went to. And very excitingly, they also agreed to sponsor this video. They've got some stats on the website that show that people who migrate from other hosting providers to WP Engine experience a 40% increase in their page load times. They've got automatic updates for WordPress and for PHP, so you don't have to deal with any of the server management stuff yourself. And the support team behind it is absolutely fantastic. Anytime I've needed support for since like 2017 through right now, I just message them on the live chat and they either get someone on the phone or they just reply almost immediately. And so if you're in this level three zone for being a creator or potentially you're a business and you want a fully fledged website that is way more customizable than a lot of the other options that you've got and you wanna go with WordPress, which is free and open source and has a ridiculously big team behind it and that powers like 40% of the internet. And if you want your WordPress installation and server hosted by the best option out there, WP Engine, at least in my personal view, then you can head over to wpengine.com forward slash Ali or you can hit the link in the video description. Anyway, thank you WP Engine for sponsoring this video. And let's now move on to path number two. I primarily want a website so that I can showcase myself or my services. Now I'm distinguishing path number two, the showcase from path number one, the content piece, because primarily the objective of path number two is literally just to showcase stuff where maybe you occasionally update your website. The intention of path number two is not that you wanna write blog posts once or twice a week. And so there are three options that I would recommend again on different levels. So level one is a fantastic platform called Card. And Card is a great way of building one page websites. I think Card, I've been building sites on Card also since about 2017-ish. And the great thing about Card is that it's free to get started. And if you wanna to upgrade to the pro version, it's only $19 for the whole year which makes Card like probably the single best paid hosting option. Generally, yes, you can get free website hosting, but it generally sucks. So you do generally have to pay at least something for website hosting. And I think Card is the best platform out there if all you really care about is having a one page website. Now, what might a one page website be? Let's say you're a freelancer and you just wanna advertise your services. Or let's say you're a professional and you literally just want a one page website where you can just write a few details so that if someone Googles you, they stumble on your website. Maybe you could just write a little bit of a bio or include a link to your CV or include a link to your social profiles. Alternatively, let's say you're a business and you do lawn care services and you literally just want a website, a single page that says what kind of services you provide and a number to ring you or some kind of contact form to put on the website where people can get in touch. All of those simple use cases are absolutely fantastic for card and it's pretty easy to use and pretty easy to update as and when you need to and it's the cheapest option out there. So that was level one. Now level two in this showcase mode is something called Super. And Super is basically a website buildery type platform that takes in a Notion page and converts it into a website. Again, this is not amazing if you're planning to publish loads and loads of content very regularly. For that, I'd recommend 
path number one. But if you just want to showcase your services, you want a business website, maybe you want a careers page, a lot of people use it for that, then you can literally just create a Notion page for free on Notion. You're probably familiar with Notion. If you're not, it's basically like a note taking app with a bunch of other fancy features. But then you basically write down whatever you want on this page, it's very easy. And then you hook it up to super, super.so and it turns it into a website for you. Now, Super also does have a free option if you want to be limited by the number of pages that you can create. And if you want the subdomain, something.super.so. But if you want something a little bit more professional looking, then you've got to upgrade to the professional package, which I think starts at $12 a month. So this is a more expensive option than Card. It's even a more expensive option than Ghost, the starter plan. But I know a bunch of people who have built websites on Super and they generally find it fairly accessible without needing to know how to code. Now, the level three option here is to use something like Squarespace or Wix. You have almost certainly seen YouTubers talk about Squarespace and you've probably seen ads for Wix. These are, I guess, the two most famous platforms when it comes to kind of all-in-one website builder. Now, I've used both Squarespace and Wix for a bunch of different websites over the years. I haven't used them in the last year though, so maybe things have updated in the last 12 months. But whenever I use them to make websites, it's nice and easy, but there's something about the experience of making a website on Squarespace or Wix that I have not really been a fan of compared to something like Ghost or something like Card or something like Super. But if you know absolutely nothing about code and you're willing to pay a little bit more for a very easy plug and play solution, you can connect your own domain name. They give you a domain name for free for a year. Both Wix and Squarespace have basically the same features. You could even sell stuff on them if you want to. But if you're looking to have a website where you're publishing lots and lots of content regularly, this isn't the option that I would recommend, which is why Squarespace and Wix are not in path number one. But let's say you want to have a business website and you don't want to deal with all the faff of kind of these other website builders and you want the option of customizing the navigation or the colors or the fonts and adding in more pages further down the line, then both Squarespace and Wix are pretty good. Path number three, I primarily want a website so that I can sell my stuff. Now here it really depends on do you want to sell physical products or do you want to sell digital products? If you want to sell physical products, then the best option these days is Shopify. Shopify is generally considered the gold standard when it comes to creating an e-commerce store. You've got all sorts of small brands like we were selling our stationery on Shopify because it's great for physical products. It links up with like distribution and warehouses and all that kind of stuff. Kind of easy to customize, although it's easier to customize if you know a little bit of code, but they've got tons and tons of themes that you can choose from. And actually Shopify powers even huge brands like Gymshark that does like a billion dollars in sales every year. So basically from starting out to scaling up into a billion dollar business, Shopify is the way to go for a lot of direct to consumer physical product brands. But if you wanna sell digital products, there are lots of other options that are more like full featured than Shopify for the digital stuff. There are two that I'd recommend personally. So a sort of beginner basic option is Podia that I was using from 2017 through to 2022. Podia is great. It's reasonably priced. I think it's like $39 a month. So if you're expecting to be selling more than $39 a month worth of digital products, like online courses or PDFs or downloads or anything like that, then Podia is really nice. It lets you make a website, that website can look really pretty even if you don't know how to code. And actually we did like $2.5 million worth of sales for our YouTuber Academy by just hosting it on Podia and not having to think too hard about it. But there's a more advanced version of Podia and that is Kajabi, which is the one that we now have migrated everything over to. It takes a little bit more work of like tinkering with it a little bit to get it looking really nice. I think Podia looks really nice out of the box, but Kajabi is more customizable and you can make funnels and you can have an email list and you can do all this other fancy stuff. It does start at around $150 a month. So if you expect to be doing way more than $150 a month in sales, then a platform like Kajabi would be what I would recommend. But really the main thing when it comes to any of these nine different things that we've talked about is actually figuring out what you personally want a website for and then actually just trying out a few of these different platforms. You might find you really like Squarespace. You might find, oh my God, I freaking love Ghost. You might find Substack solves all your problems. But there isn't really one easy answer for what's the best website platform. It's like they all have their pros and cons. They all have different user interfaces and user experiences. And it just kind of depends what works for you. So hopefully this video gave you a little bit more of an insight into what options you might wanna go for when it comes to starting a website. If you wanted to go completely down the free route and you're interested in finding out more about the Substack thing, I've got a video here, which is all about a step-by-step -step guide to how to start an email newsletter. So check that out if you want more of a step-by-step -step guide on how to get started with Substack. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you hopefully in the next video. Bye-bye.